Hello, um, I've been a little bit busy. I, I thought uh, it'd be a good idea for me to do a little bit of a kind of a channel update and a thank you to some of the people that sent me, well no, all of the people that have sent me stuff recently. Well, I hope it's all of the people that sent me stuff recently, but um, if I've forgotten anyone, uh, I hope you understand because, um, well, what's my excuse? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not very good at remembering things. I'm very forgetful. And every now and then I'll just come across something and think, ah, someone sent me that. Did I do a thank you for that one? And I'm re I know people do say that it's not, you know, they don't want me to make a thank you video or to make a big fuss about something that they've sent in for me. But it is important to me and it doesn't hurt this second channel. And if people don't want to watch these videos, they're quite welcome not to. It's, it's absolutely fine. I, I'm not... Um, I'm not worried about viewer figures on the second channel. The second channel is just a place for me to relax and put up videos that just serve the whole scheme, if you like. Um, so in terms of updates, the last video that I put out was the toast rack repair video, which isn't doing very well. And I didn't expect it to, because that was, I don't, <laughs> I'm not sure if you realize this, but there's a difference between certain types of video on my main channel. It's not so much that there's there's a big difference between the type of video that I want to put on there and the type of video that I sometimes have to put on there because of time restraints. Uh, just waiting for my neighbor to roll their wheelie bin down the side of the other side of this wall. <laughs> probably scratching it up the side of my car as they go. Anyway, so sometimes videos um, are planned and scripted and more polished and edited. And I'll, I'll put quite a bit of effort into those that side of things. The actual thing that I'm doing that I'm recording is, um, it could be anything, it could be building something, it could be repairing something absolutely anything um but i can approach that in different ways and the, the the way that i approached the toast rack repair video the last one was i actually recorded that in the same way as i'm recording this unscripted i did an intro where i spoke to camera unscripted and then did the repair and the repair went completely as expected it wasn't very exciting and i was quite close to putting that on the second channel because I I didn't see that there was very much story to it but I knew that there was going to be a bit of a gap between the video before the hacko and the desoldering uh, station comparison video which is done quite well uh, and the next video that's coming up which is going to take quite a lot of work and is underway by the way um, so I knew there was going to be a bit of a gap, so I thought I'd just slot that video in there and I would, instead of just using the unscripted introduction on that video, I actually recorded a scripted intro and a scripted outro and put that um, on either end of it, on the, of that video, of that footage. And I, it didn't come out too badly and it didn't do terribly badly. Um, it's, you know, it's got some reasonable views. I think it's getting up to 2000 views now, which, you know, I'm not a huge channel and um, a quarter of my subs watching something that I release is good. But that's, yeah, that's that's why sometimes I'll do slightly different t styles of video. And to put that into context, that um, toast, rack, toast rack repair video took me less than 24 hours to make from start to finish. So including the repair, all of the recording, all of the editing, and then adding on the scripted part as well, plus all the other housework that you have to do with videos, which is like making a thumbnail and writing a description and it's just like lots of different bits and pieces. And it took me less than a day, uh, which is super fast for something like that. And it's probably down to the fact that I've got quite a nice setup 
where I can have cameras set up permanently and I can just switch them on and start doing something, which is always the idea and always the, the wish that, um, because the, any, anything that you do, any barrier that you put in front of things that you want to do will stop you doing it. Eventually, it, won't, it might not do it every time, but it will stop you eventually. And, and then that's lost material, lost enjoyment, uh, lost fun. So I try to remove all those barriers, but I'm, I'm very lucky with the setup I've got now, which I have just improved. Um, but I'm not gonna go into that part of what I've done. So the, the, uh, the next video that's coming up is the Missing Spectrum one. That's the working title, of the Missing Specky video. And that's making a, a replacement for the one that went missing that eBay lost. And currently that's uh, the still in writing. I'm, I'm writing up the, or oh, I've finished writing the script 90%. Uh, I've got a few other bits of pieces to do and I'm gonna record this one slightly differently as well. Um, normally I would write the script, I'd record the, this part, talking, you know, reading the voiceover to camera and then I would actually do the work, recording B-roll as I went to add in over my um, voiceover. Uh, but what I'm gonna do this time, I think, is I'm gonna write the script and then I'm gonna do the work and record all that extra footage. And then, I'm because things change, and this has caught me out a couple of times, I'm then at the end going to record the voiceover part, uh, having already written it at the beginning. So right at the beginning, record the B-roll, record the voiceover, and and then put it all together. Because things change in the middle, um, in that middle section where I'm actually doing the work and um, building the thing, fixing the thing, sometimes things change. I have to change the script slightly and if I've already recorded it I'm less likely to want to change things and I might just clutch things together or just cut them out all together so that's yeah that's um that's coming up that that involves also setting a date that I'm gonna have to work towards and I think let me just check I think that date is the 5th of May which is actually my mum's birthday and that day is when I'm gonna auction off the missing Specky, um, the one that we recovered. I'm not gonna do, <laughs> I had intended before all the health issues that happened with my family members the, um, in the first few months of this year, I had intended to do like a mini charity event. So like a live stream and um and then do the auction with the live stream and have a couple of special guests and things but i can't i can't commit myself to too much so what i'm going to do is i'm going to commit to actually selling the missing specky on the 5th of may uh the, the auction will end on the 5th of may sunday the 5th of may probably it'll end i'd imagine Hmm, it's a tricky one, probably 9 p.m. UK time. And the, uh, <laughs> that's British summer time. Uh, so I need to get this video out. It's, and it's gonna help me and motivate me to get it out in time um, within the next couple of the weeks to promote that so that we can raise some more money. But I'll also probably do a small Just Me live stream. Maybe I might get I might rope someone else in to help me out. It's nice to have someone to talk to in these things. Um, just for a couple of hours or something, just to, leading up to the, the end of that auction so that we can see it together and maybe um, push it a little bit more. Um, and as long as, it, um, as long as it sells for more than 300 pounds, I know it, it did sell for 680 pounds the first time round. Ah. Uh, which I'm not expecting this time because there was a lot of publicity drummed up around that. There was a lot of work went into actually building up 
that head of steam that we had leading up to the the final day of the last charity event and I, so if I you know as long as because we bought the missing specky back for 300 pounds as long as we make that or more then I'm happy because I just want it to be somebody's I want it you know it's it's been sat here for a, a, a few months now and it shouldn't be it should be in someone else's possession it's not mine it belongs you know the more well, the money that um was used to buy it. it belongs to the charity so i want to get that money back and i want to get it off to the befriending scheme um, maybe raise a, a little bit maybe we'll do a little bit of a, a just giving in fact yeah we'll do I, th I think the just giving page is still open so um we'll probably just advertise that and see if we can raise a little bit of extra money for that but that's not the main charity event this year the main charity event is going to be towards the second half of the summer and that will be for uh, the same thing, befriending scheme, and it's going to be a similar format to last year, but obviously we're going to try and make things bigger and it's going to be Commodore based this time. So all of the machines up for auction and uh, to raise money will be um, will be Commodore machines, so Commodore 64s and Amigas mostly. And um, we've already had Lots of people offer pledge to um, donate computers and parts and things. I've already got um, from Rob Taylor the 500 plus plus board, um, which I'm going to build. Well, that's that's going to be my thing. I'm going to build a an Amiga 500 plus and salvage all the parts off of a battery damaged Amiga 500 plus and, and then make it into a new one. So that's going to be my contribution and I'm going to be looking uh, for contributions from others. And I'm hoping this year, I don't know if this is going to be a good idea. And what I'm hoping to do is see if I can get some YouTubers in other areas to set up, you know, to if they if they want to donate something, because normally they would be, they would want to donate something that wouldn't be able to send it over to me for then. To then be sold on uh, auction maybe they can set up an auction in their own area so if i can find say an australian uh youtuber or somebody in the americas uh youtuber who quite likes a, a commodore machine um and might have something that they want to offer for charity and if they can um, do that and raise a little bit of money that way and then sell it in their own area rather than all this international shipping business then that might make things a bit more attractive for for others i'm not sure if that's you know i've only just come up with that idea so today i was having a little think about it so let, let's see uh, i'll put some meat on the bones of that idea and then let's see what happens anyway i've got some bits and pieces here on my workbench that uh, have been coming in over the last few weeks and I wanted to say thank you to some people. So Chris Branson sent me this. This was on my Amazon wish list, and he says, thanks for, for all you do. I hope this helps with future repairs from Chris Branson. And I've branded it, Chris, with your, with your name. <laughs> um, and it's to go with my Hacko desoldering gun. So that's been living in there and that's marvelous. Thank you, Chris. That's really, really nice. Dave Wild from Retro Workshop and the, the, this is a YouTube channel. Uh, you can find youtube.com slash, that's the old way of doing it. It's now an at Retro Workshop. Uh, he was, um, he's actually dormant on YouTube at the moment. He, had, he I've been nagging him to make some more videos again. Um, this has been up on my wall. He sent this lovely postcard that he sent. Uh, I've got some greasy th finger marks on and Dave, it was one of the early inspirations for me when I started out. And he's someone that uh, did some ZX Spectrum repairs, essentially, that uh, got me thinking, well, I quite like the, the look of this. I could do some ZX Spectrum repairs. Um, but he's he's done all sorts of things. Um, but he sadly, um, I think he was doing a lot of DIY at home, which I, I hear via email conversations with him that... Uh, might be getting towards the end of it and he might be actually 
ready to make some more videos. I know he's recorded some. I think he has a BBC micro repair and a Sinclair C5 meetup uh, to video to make. So yeah, if you do want to go and subscribe to him, there might, there might be some content coming and his back catalog is well worth watching. He's a really nice guy. And anyway, so Dave sent me some top neck flux uh, because I think he ordered some from Amazon and Amazon sent him far too much. So um, he sent me all of this, which I mean, I, it took me ages to get through half a bottle. I probably three quarters of the way through the bottle I am now, I'm using now. But um, I don't need all of this, so I'm going to be, I'll, I'll put this in surprise packages. Um, I, I know someone who might want one, but I'll, I'll talk to him via the magic of direct messaging. So yeah, that's, um, let's put those there. Thank you, Dave. I will leave that there. Thomas um, Regman says, enjoy your gift. Best wishes from Poland, Thomas Regman. And Thomas sent me two of these by this is again an Amazon wish list thing these uh, not this part this is I've put this part on myself but this is a, a C clamp or a C stand so I can I can clamp this to uh, a desk or my workbench although it doesn't fit on my main workbench which is a bit of a shame I might have to cut a little bit out of my main workbench or add a block onto it so I can have one of these attached but they're really good for popping lights on or a camera I've got my quick release plates on. But yeah, he sent me two of these. Thank you, Thomas. They are excellent and they've already been used in multiple videos. I usually have them, if um, you've seen me where I have the camera uh, over this side of the workshop facing me and over here for some of my re recent voiceovers, these have been used for the lighting. They're really good. Thank you. Matt sent me uh, this C16 power supply. Hi, uh, Lee, here's the C16 PSU I offered. I don't know if it works, but I hope you get some use out of it. I know it's been a difficult year so far with Mrs. Lee and Thomas both having serious health issues. And I also know that a 40 year old PSU won't help with that. Yes, it does. But if there's anything I can ever do, you only need ask. Thank you for bringing me further into this community of ours. It's helped my own mental health immeasurably to have like-minded people to engage with. You're a gent and a scholar, and I look forward to seeing you again in person soon. Yours, Matt. So a couple of things there. Um, uh, we won't go into the health issue thing. That's, but he's, uh, he's talking about the community of ours. That, so it's the whole retro community thing where we have the Big Red Arrow Club and um, slowly bringing in more and more YouTube channels into that. Uh, and it's just a lovely place where we all support each other. And um, yeah, Matt is, is a great part of that. He's, and he's a really nice guy. And I was really lucky enough to... Uh, meet him in person at the RMC cave last September I think it was when we had the Big Red Arrow Club meet up there and Neil did a video where he, I think it was retro desert retro youtuber desert island thing that he did made a video and you'll you can see Matt in there but yeah tech made easy is Matt's YouTube channel like I say, he's a really lovely guy and he does some really good stuff. So another one for you to subscribe to. I will leave, actually, I'll leave that like that. Oh, actually, the um, the power supply. I didn't realise, when he, he offered me a C16 power supply, I thought it was like a C64 power supply with a, a dim plug end, but it's just a barrel jack. Um, so it's not, ooh, it's not actually essential. It's also got a nasty, oh, nasty bulge. There, so this definitely wants taking apart before it's ever plugged in. I'm not sure about that cable, <laughs> but it's it's Commodore branded, and I'd rather have it than it go in a bin. And that plug has got to go. <laughs> That's a terrible plug. But thank you, Matt. That's really kind of you. Yes. So Fuzzy Lee, uh, who doesn't live very far away from me, and we um, we often swap. Bits. He's. I recently gave him my um, hot air station, or a hot air station. It wasn't my one. I've still got one. Um, this is something he had hanging around and never used, and he thought that I should use it. And I, I did have one on my Amazon wish list, which he spotted, and uh, it's a Duratool fume extractor. And I'd made one, which 
was terrible really it was, it was just a fan on a stick basically uh, and I never used it because it was just bulky and um, didn't really work very well just blew air across the the work but this works great and I've recently used this when I I was making a keyboard for my friend Jonathan a mode keyboard a really posh um, mechanical keyboard with I had to solder in a load of micro switches micro no micro switch a load of key switches and this was um, invaluable in that thank you Lee that's already become a big feature in the workshop and we've got one here from this come in the other day this is from Pascal and he says hi Lee just wanted to say thanks for all your help and feedback you give give me on your discord kind regards Pascal Altina Altena aka Paznil <laughs> aka PazTube from Pascal Altena um, and it's a small rig, small rig super clamp I use these everywhere and this is again this is off my amazon wish list uh, i'll show you this just small rig makes some fantastic stuff good value camera gear so i can attach something like a oh, have i got one handy yep i've got one up here this one's already got a clamp on it though here's, here's one with a clamp attached so these arms oh, actually this isn't a small rig arm this is a cheap one but um in fact, yeah, that's the uh, the cheap version of the clamp, um, and they are just oh no, that's a that's a small rig one that I've put on there, but these just will clamp onto something and won't let go. They are rock solid, brilliant things. Thank you, Pascal. And the last one, the last one is from Andy Taylor, who says, Lee, congratulations on eight thousand subs. On the 10th of April 2024 from Andy Taylor. Oh, so I went past 8,000 subs. That's something that you should put in an update video, really, isn't it? Uh, thank you, Andy. That's really kind of you um, to mention that. I, uh, I 8,000. I'm much faster than I expected to grow at the start. Much, much faster. And this is what he sent. I don't know if he's a mind reader, but that is a GoTech. And I'm working on some, you know, a side project that I'm not actually uh, making a video of at the moment where it's a floppy disk con um, device for the ZX Spectrum, uh, a, an Opus Discovery that um, has a really bad power supply and that keeps killing my Spectrums where um, it's got a big old transformer inside it and it does like a weird it's odd because it not only powers the gotech oh sorry the opus Dis discovery the spectrum plugs into this massive big metal box and is powered over its bus over the uh, edge connector and i couldn't get stable voltage out of it it i changed lots of parts in it to try and fix you know the obvious stuff the there's got some it's got some um, um, voltage regulators some lm317 voltage regulators and it's got some bridge re rectifiers there and i changed those are the the uh, usual sub suspects and plus all the capacitors as well changed all of those and it it still just kept um dumping random voltage in <laughs> into the spectrum and the spectrum I, I think I killed three spectrums. <laughs> I've repaired them as well, but you know it's not a big deal. But um, it's just a bit of a pain. So I've actually ended up stripping out that power supply, and I've put in a Pico power supply because it needs um, five volts, twelve volts, and nine volts inside there. So it needs twelve volts for the um, floppy drive. Uh, power supplies and it needs nine volts for the spectrum power supply and five volts for the for the board it's, it also has it also converts some of that to minus five volts somewhere i think itself so i but i've done it uh, done that and uh, got it all working and stable and thankfully it all works really well 
um, and hopefully I'll be able to get that back to its owner at some point. Um, although they, um, it's not quite what I said I was going to do with it, but they, I did contact them and say, say, I don't think I can fix the power supply, but I might be able to, I might be able to get a bit more drastic with it and, um, and turn it into something a bit different. Anyway, so I needed a GoTech. Uh, I have one, but um, it's actually attached to something else at the moment, and I hate taking GoTechs from, you know unplugging them and plugging them into different machines. So this just brilliant timing. Thank you, Andy. Um, and thank you for the uh, 8,000 sub congratulations as well. Right, I think that is probably long enough. So the, yeah, the next video on the main channel will be the missing Specky. If Andrew and Sarah are watching this, be excited. Um, the, uh, the, the That one was delayed so long that it was becoming difficult for me to actually get started on it again because I'd had so many false starts on it. But yeah, it's it's on the way now. It's it's uh, it's in the machine and we will we will get that one done. After that, I've got free reign actually because um, I might start actually making videos. Well, I, I'll soon start making videos about the Commodore stuff. So because, you know, I'd rather get that underway so that we're we're looking at a longer build up to the main event. It's a bit of a rush last year because it was all new. But anyway, exciting things happening this year. It, as long as everybody's health stays well, I've got big hopes for where we'll be standing at the end of this year. I mean, where we as in this channel uh, and the different things that I want to do. There's all sorts of plans and um, things that I want to I want to add in because this isn't just you know I, about making repairs. The main title of the channel is or the name of the channel is more fun making it. I like making things and summer's coming up, so might see some sawdust. Who knows? Paul will be excited. 